Hi everyone, my name is Angelique, also known as Light. Welcome to my channel. Please stop what you're doing and click like on this video. Share this video, comment below, tell your story, and last but not least, subscribe. Stay a while. If you like chosen one videos, narcissistic abuse, uh, zodiac traits, um, spiritual experiences, all that is on my channel. You will never be bored on this channel, okay? Um, if you want to donate so I can keep running this channel or you want to book a phone session, you can do so. All that information will be below, okay, or in the description bar. If you don't see it, comment at me and I will reply to you, all right? If not, guys, if you see someone comment, you can help them out for me. <laughs> okay, so let's get right into the topic. This is like my maybe third time trying to record this. Hopefully, it comes out this time. All right, so um, this is going to be a short video. I know that. Um, why they don't like to be alone with you. Um, I have another video on here called um, Their Demons uh, Are Intimidated by Your Light. Something along that line. So it's kind of similar, but I'm not talking about just random people who uh, you don't know, and that's what I'm talking about in those particular video, that particular video. But this is people who you already have like an established relationship with. And um, a lot of us did not realize we were the chosen one. We just felt like the black sheep, the outcast. Nobody loved us. We always are very different from our family members. Um, had a lot of hardship in our lifetime. Um, feeling like the outcast. Um, being blamed for everything, you know, horrible relationships with our parents or siblings, the list goes on. Okay. So a lot of us, we turn to friends, right? Of course, because if we didn't have those relationships with our relatives, um, who should have, should have loved us. Right. <laughs> um, so we turn to these friendships, right? But as we grew, as we heal in that light, Bing, got bright as hell on them. That's when people's um, masks started to fall off. And we noticed a lot of different behavior changes to our light, okay? So it's different when a chosen one is in the dark and they don't know who they are. But as soon as the chosen one knows who they are, everything changes on the scene. And um, we pay attention to these things, right? So I noticed that when... I wasn't living in my truth. You know, a lot of people love to be around me a lot, whether it was just one-on-one -on -one or like a whole bunch of people around me. Like I remember in my 20s, um, I I love this restaurant in New York called Dallas BBQs. And um, I remember I would have like 10 to 15 friends. I can't, I don't even have four friends now. That's what's crazy. I I don't even have four friends right now, okay? Um, I have I have associates, but friends, I had like 10, 15 friends back then, like going up in this restaurant and they weren't connected to each other. They were my friends, you know what I'm saying? It was really, really crazy when I think about it. But anyway, so um all of that energy back then was different than now when you know who you're a chosen one now people don't like to be around me anymore those same people well half of them i'm not friends with anymore of course they're gone <clears throat> i don't know where they're at but whoever i still even speak to it's more like a associate type of thing not a friendship but i noticed the difference of how they used to treat me back then when i didn't know my light when they were able to use me and abuse me take my take the way I speak take the way I think my words everything and, and and feed off my energy feed off my swag that's what they do they copy from the chosen ones okay <laughs> and when we don't know so they've been robbing us for years okay but when we finally become the real chosen one our true self and we're on our walk we've done our healing journey or we're on our healing journey we're on our spiritual journey now we the big dog we know who we are right that's when all these funny style situations come up and we notice that because now why we're more aware right so a lot of these spirits uh yes they're gonna run from you as i stated in my other video you know but these people who you already 
think they're your friends or, you know, think they're your associates or your coworkers or a couple of your relatives or whoever, um, they don't like to be one-on-one with you, okay? <laughs> Little old you, just one person makes them paranoid. Your spirit makes them paranoid. Why? Because they're not living in their truth. That's the reason why. They're fake. They're phony. They're mastered and fall off. They live a life that they feel that you don't live, okay? They put you on this pedestal in their mind. They know you're better than them. They know that you're the truth, but they make it seem with their degrees or with their cars or their money that they try to make it seem like you're better than them, okay? I mean, that they're better than you. And, but the truth is they spiritual, spiritual light is the only currency on earth, okay? It's the highest currency long where money will be burned and not even used anymore spiritual (laughs) light is the highest form of currency on this planet okay and outside of this planet so as you go into your light you become the chosen one you're aware they can't stand to be around you but they're not gonna cut you off because they still want to watch you. They still want to drain you of your light and your advice and your wisdom. They still want to watch you and take notes. So they're not going to cut you off. They're going to be a half-assed friend. That's what they are going to be, okay? And I realized back then, everybody loved to be around me. Now, people can't stand to be around me. And if they do, they got to bring an entourage. So you got to understand Dark spirits, um, people who are insecure, don't love themselves, um, don't have like this mind of their own, the sheep, the masses, they can't stand alone. Okay, you understand the sheep is a whole bunch of them together, a whole flock of them together. The masses, everybody got to be thinking the same way. Oh, everybody must get you know what. Everybody must wear a mask. Everybody must do this or do that. They don't want to do something until they have a whole system, a whole mass of people who are who want to do what they're doing, okay? This is why when you have conversations with certain people, it's like, oh, you don't believe in that? You what is, what is wrong with you? Because you're the only one in the room that actually thinks for themselves, okay? So this is why they don't like to be around you. This is why they got to bring their boo. They got to bring their best friend. They got to bring a whole entourage because just to be in a presence with you alone, it makes that spirit itch. They start itching. They start sweating. They don't want to wear their mask like that. They don't know what to do. They got to hurry up. They got to hurry up. This happened to me recently. This girl that I was friends with, I wish I can tell y'all who she is. I really wish I want to te- I want to expose who she is so that everybody on this channel, you know what? I don't want to do that because that's going to really expose who this person is, okay? But anyway, so I noticed I I I contacted this girl because I had not seen her in a year. So I said, "Oh, let me let me call her and see if she wants to do dinner." You know, let's hang out or, you know, do something or whatever. So I called her um, one weekend. And I said, hey, do you want to hang out? She was like, oh, no, um, I'm not working right now. Um, but I'll let you know when I get some money. So I said, all right, cool. No problem. I didn't I didn't uh, bother with it. Went on with my weekend. So then I had came into some extra money. And I called her again. I said, hey, girl, do you want to go out? Because um, I have a little extra money this weekend. Um, I'll treat you. So she said, oh, no, you don't have to do that. It's okay. But anyway, we we decided we were going to go out. And she was like, oh, I'm going to pick you up. We're going to go to Long Island, blah, 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 blah. We're going to have a good time. At least I'll be able, you know, to give you something, though. And then it was really interesting because she said that she wouldn't got like a wax done i'm like how does she have money for a wax anyway so um i didn't make a big deal of it you know because in the past this girl had you know pay for dinner for me too so it wasn't a big deal anyway so um we went out to dinner no 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 she called i was getting my pedicure so she called me and i'm like hey what's up and i'm like i'm almost finished and she's like okay well i just wanted to ask you something 
And I'm like, okay, what's up? She was just like, oh, um, I haven't seen one of my friends in a long time. And I'm, I'm on the phone with her like, girl, I haven't seen you in a year, like over a year. Like, what are you talking about? And she's just like, oh, yeah, um, I haven't seen one of my friends in a long time. And I want to know, can I bring her to dinner with us? And like putting me like in this weird situation. So I, at the time, I was like, I don't really care. I was like, you know what? After this, I'm probably not going to see her again because I could see the pattern of where this has been before, right? Because if me and you haven't seen each other in a year, we haven't spoken. Um, don't you think that me and you need a one-on-one -on -one to where we can talk and we can connect? Why would you bring someone who I don't even know where I'm not going to be able to have a one-on-one -on -one with her, basically? But I was like, you know what? I'm hungry. I don't want to get into it with this girl. I said, whatever, you can bring her. So when she picks me up, the other girl, she's sitting in the front seat. They're talking. They're having a conversation up there in the car. You know, eventually I chime in or whatever because that's just me. I'm a talker. And when we get to the restaurant, they're sitting across from each other. You know, they're talking, you know, about this and that and work and all of this stuff and there's really no interaction, you know, and then it was a like kind of an awkward moment. Um, and it was really strange because um, then her friend was like, hey, are you single? Because I want to hook you up with my coworker. And I was just like, I don't know this girl. It was very awkward and weird, right? But anyway, on the spiritual level, this is the type of things that they'll do, okay? They can't be alone with you. They always have to bring other people with them. And it goes much deeper than that. Sometimes people feel like, oh, some people just need an entourage or maybe they just wanted to bring their friend. No, it's about you, chosen one. You make them uncomfortable. They can't stand to be in your presence alone. Okay? <clears throat> one, they're intimidated by you. Two, dark spirits, they got to they gotta work with a pack. Okay? Light beings, light workers, we don't have to work in a pack. We fill up the room by ourselves. The more healing work you do, the more spiritual work you do, the more shadow work you do, you're going to be like, dang, I grew up in a household full of people, but I like being by myself. I like spending time by myself. And you realize you make a commotion anywhere you go with even your silence. I, I love that. That's saying my silence is powerful. I know even my silence is powerful. That's why when I, I'm not posting on social media or I'm not answering texts or I'm not answering calls, it freaks people out because your silence can be very powerful. Chosen ones don't have to speak. Your spiritual light speaks for itself. They are wearing a mask, okay? They're in competition with you most of the time. Uh, they they know that you're better than them. They don't feel worthy to even be in your presence. So they got to go bring their homegirl, their homeboy who are just like them. All right. Then when they get around you, those two are on the same frequency. Their conversation and their mindset is going to be the same. Now, when you start talking, you're going to be looking like the weird one, the conspiracy theorist, the outcast. You see this game they play? And a lot of, and this goes overlooked. This goes overlooked, but that's why they do that. Then a lot of times they don't want you to be the center of attention. They got to be the center of attention. Okay. They don't focus. And a lot of times when narcissists don't just do this, this is just weak beings, uh, um, dark spirits. They're corny spiritually. <laughs> They're boring spiritually. They have nothing to talk about. They can't even hold a conversation with you. So they got to bring their man, their girl, their boy, their mama. So that way they have somebody who's on their level to kind of like, you know, calm out the energy in the room, basically. Okay. Because they know there's no comparison, which is dumb because you alone, you, you're a one man army. Okay. You're a one woman army. You don't need anybody. You don't need no entourage. Okay. So I noticed that this happens a lot. I noticed, um... You know, what they'll ask of you or ask from you, they will never do for you. I I even had uh, dark beings, I call them. I even had dark beings tell me I couldn't bring a friend. Oh, no, you got to come by yourself. 
They want you to feel like an outcast. They want you to be alone. Okay, one time this girl, when I was celebrating Thanksgiving, I was friends with, every every time I looked up, she with a different man. She always bring her man to girls' night. We're supposed to have a girls' night. She'll bring a dude to girls' night when we're out having drinks. She'll bring a dude to dinner. She'll bring a dude to the movies. I never said nothing. But as soon as she had Thanksgiving dinner at her house, and I'm like, oh, I have a date this year. She was like, well, you can't come. You So this is what they <laughs> this is what they do. They, they play these games, all right? So pay attention to when people do that. They want to make you feel like the outcast, okay? It's almost like they, 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 they invited you to your stoning, okay? They're inviting you to your stoning. But it's hilarious because I'm like, oh, okay. You wanna, sometimes I love it because I'm like, okay, go ahead and play that game because... I could sit here and hold up this whole conversation and have all y'all minds effed up with with my light. <laughs> you know, it used to make me feel uncomfortable, but now it's just, it's hilarious now. That is a, a real, real indication. When you have relationships with people, there's nothing wrong with hanging out with a group of people. You haven't seen them in a year or two. Y'all don't see each other much. And lovers do this too. Lovers will do this to you. Them dark being lovers that you have, they will do this to you too, okay? Uh, they can't stand to be around you. You make them nervous, okay? Like a hooker in church, you make them nervous. They can't stand to be alone with you. All right, I don't want to keep repeating myself. <laughs> I'm sure y'all got the, got the point, but don't feel bad. Because I remember when this started to happen, I was just like, why what, Why don't they want to spend quality time with me? Why don't they want to be alone with me? We used to be alone before. What's going on? Why are they always inviting a friend? <coughs> why are they doing this? I noticed a lot of these dark beings, they can't, they can't be alone. They don't even have enough substance to be alone. They couldn't. They just couldn't. <coughs> And I'm not talking about like, oh, if you go to like a party or, you know, you want to invite a friend or anything like that, but just pay attention to these people who you're supposed to have these relationships with. And I told that story even last year, I cut her off though, the, um, the chick that was a psychologist, the chick that is a psychologist, we had not seen each other in I think almost two years and she invited her husband and her two nephews. And I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> it was just very, very weird, you know? Um, but yeah, they'll do that. Don't feel no kind of way. Just move out the way. That's it. All right. I'll talk to you soon, guys. Don't forget to donate and don't forget to book your phone sessions with me. Take care. Have an amazing weekend.